Oh, it's wet. A lot of dew this morning in the air. Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. I got a mic and I'm trying something different today. I'm gonna try my cell phone, see how it works. Got a mic. I'd be able to maybe get a little bit more personal with you. And plus, it, this is a garden tour. It is November 1st, 2021. I can't believe the year is coming to a close soon, but the holidays are coming, which is, you know, gonna maybe make you think more about holidays and some of you that don't have hummingbirds right now, because I've got so many messages of, well, you're not gardening now, you have no hummingbirds, you know what? They'll be back before you know it. We'll be all gardening before we know it. I'm gonna be planting in the house all, all winter and I'm already planting. So I'm gonna go garden through garden very quickly, I hope. Let's try not to make this an hour because I have so many projects. I know I promised you some of these projects that I've got to get up. So I want to get the projects done, get the video finished and get them up for you, especially on the new planters that I'm doing, because that's going to be a big game changer for me. This is the front yard. This is the cement puzzle that Gary put together. All in all, it's doing perfect. I absolutely love it. The squash kind of looked really bad. So I trimmed it all back. The tomato plant's okay and they're making a comeback. A lot of the squash that stopped growing like two months ago, all of a sudden they're making a comeback. Everything in here is really the same. I'm going to say I haven't done anything new. No, I haven't done anything new. I was going to say I cleaned up, but I really didn't even clean up. I've got the same zucchini back there. I've got the cocozelle here, which I just picked one the other day that was there. And then I've got tomatoes and everything, you know, is the same. I'm not going to knock myself out in the garden as far as vegetables right now because the whole garden, that's a big plane going by, the whole garden is so self-sustained that everything is just going exactly the way it should be this time of the year. And, well, I don't know what else to say. I get all the food I want out of it, so I don't have to say, well, I'm going to try to plant something that won't grow or will grow better in the spring. Besides, all my walking onions are growing, so I have onions. I've got plenty of collard and kale growing all over the place. As you can see, tomatoes are everywhere. The squash surprisingly is growing, and of course the broccoli is perfect for this time of the year. That is just growing everywhere. The little finger limes are doing fantastic. This is unbelievable. They're just all over the plant. So I'm gonna just say that in here, everything's the same. And we'll walk around and do different areas in the yard. And I'll tell you if something's new. Now, as far as changing this in the spring, I don't think so. I really like it the way it is. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a vertical more garden there and lift those. Because I really do like it just the way it is. It's just perfect. I can come back in here. Any totes I want to refurbish, I could just take some of that wonderful compost out, move it somewhere else, get some more leaf matter in there, kitchen scraps in there, all that garbage in there. Garbage, it's not garbage, it's gold. Get it all in there. It's garbage to some people. And get the plants growing again. So I'm going to kind of see on that. The only thing I really have to do is I still have to get rid of all those pots. And there's native soil that's our clay is in there. So I don't want to just dump it and forget about it since it's already in the pots back there. I'm going to leave them right now because a lot of times I want to stick a steak somewhere. Let's say I want to stick a tomato steak here. Well, it can't go in here because this is blacktop. Got about that much soil, if that. But when I have a container, I can put a steak in there. And that's why I keep that in there for now until I know what I'm going to do. But those containers are also gold to me right now with this new method I've come up with that I really like. And so I'm probably going to get those emptied soon so I can get more of those built. All right, let's kind of keep going around to the different gardens to see. And we may end up seeing Gary because he's working on a broken pipe. All right. And let me know what you think about the new mic setup. I know some of you have said they don't like my peas. What can I do? Pee, pee. <laughs> They, um, one lady, I can't remember her name, said her dog falls off the chair every time I said something with a P. Well, I do the best I can. <laughs> that should be the worst in life, right? Okay, let's go over. Maybe let's go take a look at the ginger, and I'll tell you what's going on, the ginger and the turmeric. So this is my ginger, turmeric, and stevia 
garden. It's my table. It's where I grow everything because as you all know, if you've watched the other garden tours, this is the perfect microclimate for it. When I bought my stevia in the beginning, I've talked about this a lot, they said full sun. Well, full sun for who? We're in 10A, and let me tell you something, the first stevia didn't make it. But now that I know how to grow it, they like morning sun here in Southern California. It doesn't even matter how hot it is because the sun will drop down in the summer by two o'clock, and it doesn't have to get the real hot part of the day with the sun beating on it. So the stevia does fantastic here in Southern California getting full morning sun, well, through the pine trees, and then early afternoon and then after that, it's just been great. I've had that for years now, the same plant, and it spreads, and it's been doing really good. Now the turmeric is the same thing. I have found it grows much better here. Too much full sun, they get burned. And so this has also worked good for the turmeric and the ginger. This past year, I don't know what happened. I never did a full harvest. And I need to do a full harvest because my pots are bending because they're so packed. I mean, the tubers, the rhizomes are just packed inside everything. The only full harvest I did was on the black turmeric and they have done fantastic. And you're gonna ask me what to do with them. I don't know. You know, Gary, I'm gonna be honest. Gary wanted black turmeric. He gave me a teeny piece and he planted the other black turmeric in his garden. So now I've got two full buckets. I went from a teeny nothing a few years ago to one big bucket to now this whole container and another one back there. And it's medicinal and I don't know what to do with it and yet people want it. So we'll see what happens when I harvest it. I've tasted it, it it's okay. It's got a lot of, I guess, good properties to it, but really the one, I, what I really wanna concentrate on is the, the, I don't know if you call them orange, the, the bright orange turmeric, which is this one. As you can see, it is dying back. They're starting to turn yellow. The new growth on all of them is starting to slow down because they're, well, look, I'm dressed in a sweater, two shirts. I'm cold. It's cold this morning. It's not that cold, but for me, Southern California, sunny, warm girl, you know, I, it, as soon as it drops down to about 50, 60 degrees, I'm freezing. So it's kind of cool for them. They're very tropical and they're starting to show the wear of the cold nights, dropping down into the 50s, because they really do like the nights no low, lower than 60 and they really like the warm weather. But they did fantastic. I'm not gonna harvest anything yet out of them until they really die back. Once they completely start to die back and the growth on the bottom is dying back, then I'm gonna get in there because I want them to take all the nutrients that they've got in their leaves and they suck it back into the rhizomes and then you've got all the nutrients in there. Right now, it's fine if I wanna pick them now, but think about it. Mother Nature tells them it's time to go to sleep for a while. And so everything that they've stored in their leaves gets pushed back into the soil into their rhizomes and then you get all that benefit plus that's when you can store them this year what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take probably a bucket and i'm going to take them all out dust them off not wash them go through them and the ones i want to plant in the spring i'll fill up a bucket and i'll put potting soil in there dry i'm not going to really wet it i might dampen it a little bit but i'm going to probably water it once and then just leave it so they'll stay stored basically in earth, basically in soil. Then come spring, when the weather starts to warm up, I'm gonna go back and replant it back. I'm giving you a wonderful story, and the truth is I may never get to it, and then I'll be looking back at my own video going, why didn't you do that? It was such a great thing to do. That's what my hope is, that's what my hope is. Because I wanna get through all these pots, and I'm gonna to have to figure out another area where to grow them, because it's massive in here, and there's just too many. I've already extended it that way, and I may extend it more that way, which will give me more growth. And then of course, anything that I want to eat for ourselves, whether I'm baking with it, putting it in our food or for dinners and stuff, I can freeze that as well. So I can store it in the beginning, but after a while, it's going to want to grow. And I don't want it to grow when we want to eat it. So I'll take that, wash that up and freeze them. Put them on a cookie sheet. You could do it that way when they're dry, freeze them and then throw them in a plastic bag and take them out as they need them. They'll last for years that way. So anyways, that's what's going on here. So all is good. 
and I've got the one down here in a tote. That was that little nothing piece. I told, I did the video on the turmeric and the ginger, how when you're eating it, you buy them at the store and if they're organic and they haven't been treated, you can peel the skin off and then put them in a flower pot on your windowsill and they'll grow. These are the little ones that are growing from skin. They will grow slower, but it's better than peeling them and throwing it away. Or let's say you can eat it and grow it too. Why not? So you start with small ones. They all start small and then they'll grow. So that's why I'm getting so much turmeric as well. So when we eat it, I also grow it. Okay, so let's keep going and let's go into the bird garden. I'll tell you what's going on there. So now I'm in my bird garden. I love this garden, but wait till you see what I'm going to do with it. I am so fortunate to have the amount of birds in nature that comes through here. Compared to when I first moved here back in 88 to what we've got now is unbelievable. Over a year ago, I think it's going to be almost two years ago, I made a video on the smaller type birds we have around here. And at that point I had 50. We've gone way over that. And 50 was a lot to have all those species that visit the garden and come into the trees here and come down for water. That's counting the hummingbirds as one, not as the five species of hummingbirds we have. And going through all the birds, that's not counting any of the hawks. That's not counting turkey vultures or the ravens or any of those. Just the small birds. I can't believe how many, this is, you know, how many birds have come through here. That's, that's what I'm trying to say as I'm just flabbergasted. We basically turned this place into a bird sanctuary. Well, if I did that, or Gary and I did that without trying, because all I was doing was a vegetable garden and then putting out fountains, solar fountains and water everywhere. Fig trees we planted, the avocado tree was there. And then all these, you know, lemon verbena and, and different kales and colors that are just growing like trees. Well, what we did without even thinking is we brought in the birds because of that, because what do they have? They need water, they need food, they need shelter and they need a place to hide. When they come in to get water, they need to know they can dart back really quick into a tree to you know, be, prevent themselves from getting picked up by predators. So we did all that and then they all came. In other words, build it and they will come. That's what we did. We didn't build it on purpose that way. We did it mainly for our enjoyment in the beginning, but it turned out to be amazing. So I am absolutely thrilled. And I figured, you know what? This spring, I'm going all out. I'm planting now flowers by seeds. This is my first flower that I can think of that I planted by seed purposely in the house. You'd think she's never planted flowers. Well, yeah, I've thrown seeds around and they come up and stuff, but I've never actually said, hey, I'm going to grow flowers. I never really thought about it. And then I was kind of stubbornly adamant trying to only grow food for us. I thought, well, it's a small garden. I'm going to only grow the stuff we can eat. And I did bring in pansies and different flowers that we could eat. The geraniums have always been here, so I didn't pull them out. I left some of the geraniums. Well, they weren't actually here. They kind of came in with everything because we have geraniums around here. Drop a leaf and they will grow. But then I started realizing more and more the pollinators is what we need. The birds is what we need. There are little soldiers working in the yard here taking care of all the insects. I mean, we haven't used anything, any insecticide or anything to get rid of anything. I don't worry if I find something. In fact, it's the opposite. There's been times I found the caterpillar knowing it was a swallowtail and cover the whole thing with tool to not let anything eat that caterpillar. But as far as aphids and other insects, I don't worry that much because I watch all the little bush tits and all the birds come in and the wrens pecking off the little insects and then I feed the birds seed, which brings in the birds that are going to eat my greens. But on top of that, they're also saying to the insect eaters, hey, you know, it's safe here. We got water. We got food. I'm sure there's something for you and they all come in. So it's kind of a happy community and I want to build up on that. As far as food, dragon fruit plant is growing everywhere. We're almost done. We've got one down there. I'm going to pick up the camera and walk around and show you. That's, you know, done. We've had some flowers, but I don't think we're warm enough that the flowers are actually going to get big and produce a fruit, but you know, who knows? So I'll walk through here and show you what's going on. I don't want to just stand here because you can't see anything. This is, this 
This is a hybrid collared tail that I actually had in a pot that came up from seed, stuck it in the ground. It's doing fantastic. I'm gonna take this tree collared and put it in the ground. It's getting too big. You'll see my zinnias. Let me come back and get you and walk you through and then we'll go on to the next garden because you'll see much better that way. And at the end, I'll show you the contraption I made where you're sitting and watching me. Oh, you're gonna think, is she crazy? Hey, you know what? I recycle everything. I even recycled my stand. You'll see it when I get to that. I'll do that later on, sometime later. All right, let me take you for a walk so you can see what's going on. Okay, we're gonna start from the beginning as if I'm coming through the gate. So you can see what's going on here. I cleared up and I'm collecting the leaves. Remember, all leaves are soil. I mean, that's gold. That whole bucket, you know, it would cost me a lot of money to go buy store-bought potting soil or garden soil. I make my own, but it's always good to buy some too, maybe to put on the top when you're starting your garden. I have nothing against buying, but why not make your own? Here you can see I've got squash. I can't believe this. I cleared it out and I've been working with it. And look at this. Look at the zucchini. I had a big one. Oh, I've got more back there. I can see it from here. And then my last watermelon is there. That is my last watermelon. There is an avocado tree there. I'll probably pull that out. And that's a papaya. I'll probably pull that out. These are ubes and they did not grow. I think the soil was too rich because it's kind of like sweet potatoes. They don't really want over rich soil, but I'll dig them up later on and we'll see exactly what's going on. Let's go back here. See the dragon fruit? And we keep picking. Now this one, he's going to have, oh, the ants got that one. Gary didn't get that off in time. We've been picking dragon fruit constantly. We've been eating it all the time. This is a broccoli plant. And then there's some geranium back there and more broccoli. And this is all Malabar spinach. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at the leaves. Isn't that gorgeous? More, as you can see, dragon fruit. This is lemon verbena. I think it's going to start to die back soon. And then that is that great, look at this. This is the great big purple tree colored. It kind of fell over. It's perfect for cuttings. You take the straightest ones the straightest, is that right? The straight ones. And then you put them in pots and you grow them everywhere. And that's what I'm going to be doing. But isn't this gorgeous? I'm kind of walk through quickly with you because I haven't really done much. I am collecting leaves because you'll see as we walk, there's buckets. Oh, here's broccoli. And you know who's going to get broccoli. So I'll bring some broccoli to her. There's my mushroom plant. Need to do cuttings on that. Did figure out it needs shade. So now it doesn't die back. Soon as late fall comes, it all dies back. And I figured out, this is just an old thing. I put together an old t-shirt and this old piece of material. I figured out now that it's the sun. It doesn't want any sun. So I've got to move it or do, or do a lot of cuttings. Look at all the garlic chive seeds. So I'm going to get that all moved and taken care of. Let's keep going and I'll show you. But yeah, I've got to figure out on the plants, which plants go where better. Here, I, it's just beautiful. I'm I mean, like everything is just coming to life and the green, the green coloring is just gorgeous just because our weather's changed. You know, it's cool at night and a lot of these plants are very cool loving plants. Now this is what I'm absolutely crazy about. This is the zinnias that Baker Creek sent me and you know, and it's like my daughter got a package and gave it to me. I don't want flowers. She gave it to me and then I said, well, they sent me too and I never grew it. And now that I'm getting in the flowers, I couldn't believe how quickly they grew. I put like four seeds and I think three made it and I put the three in here and look at them. This is like a full flower and then the other plant is throwing single type. See how this is full? So it's interesting how in one package they're growing differently and I think they're gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. We're going to get into these new stands that I'm building. It's not what you see because there's so many things you can do with it. So we're going to definitely get into how we're going to do this because it creates such a lift in the garden. Just think, if those flowers were sitting on the ground, you would barely see them. Now I've got a technique to just, for next to nothing, do all this. And we're gonna get into this this week. So watch for that video. The video is basically done, I have to throw it together. Here is where I feed all the birds and I've got the walking onions everywhere. And so I've been putting out a lot of feeders for the birds. Now this table, I really don't want this table. I'm gonna change all this. But I leave that in case it rains. I can throw the bowl under there and then they all can be out of the rain. This is the rose bush I had forever. Got to do a lot of cuttings off of this. This is an amazing rose bush. Look at the roses. 
They remind me of a popsicle I used to eat as a kid. It had like three colors. It was red and yellow and blue all blended together. And it was beautiful. And that's the way the roses grow. But the thing that I love about this is I found it at the 99 cent store. I was looking through. You see all the new growth? Do you see what I've talked about before? There's no thorns. There's not a single thorn on that. And I have to get more of that growing. I've done cuttings on the red rose that's back there. There's some red roses, but they have a lot of thorns, but there's no thorns on that. Here, real quick, I'll show you. I'm going to gut all this. I'm going to have Kitty's Old Garden be only broccoli. And then this is just kind of sitting here. This is garlic that I never picked last year. It's all making a comeback. There's garlic, walking onions, and then just cuttings that I threw in here of purple dazzling blue kale, I should say, and all the cuttings just took off. So I've got to get them maybe in the ground in different places. I want to, I'm going to call this the bird garden because I want to really concentrate on setting this up for birds. I want to invite any bird and every bird that wants to come in here. Okay, maybe not hawks. Let them go eat out of the bath, drink out of the bathtub. But I want all the birds to be able to come in here and feel safe. So I'm trying to get that set up. Oh, look at that. There's a fly catcher. I don't know if you can see him. Can you see him? He's right there. That is a fly catcher. I absolutely love them. They have nested here. You know, he may be looking at the nest. They do nest here. And I'm wondering if he's looking at the nest there. Because I've noticed a lot of birds are starting to think about places. It looks like they're looking for nesting sites. And I've been really surprised on that because we're only November 1st. So either we're going to have a very, very mild winter, because I have seen hummingbirds nest, build their nests at the end of December and start nesting in January once. That was years ago. I couldn't believe that. But we did have a very mild winter. So I don't know, but they've been looking around. Woodpeckers looking around in trees. Now it does take time for them to get it fixed up the way they want. So I'm not sure what they're doing. Maybe we will have a mild winter, but we do need rain. This is the hybrid plant that came up, the one I always talk about. This is absolutely gorgeous. I love this plant. I want to do a lot of cuttings off of that. It tastes really good. It's not real sharp like collard. It's got a little bit more of a kale to it. And it's just, it's just fantastic. It was just the seed that came up in there. And like I've said so many times in the, in the past garden tours, there was a collard there. And then I have the dazzling blue kale there. And then I have the dinosaur kale. And they all went to flower. And I think it grew. It crossed once. And then the hybrid grew again and crossed. I think it's a three-way. So the hybrid poly got pollinated by something else. See, not much is going on here. And we don't have a lot of sun right now. So the solar fountains aren't really going. The sun is just coming out. It's early in the morning. Plus, we've been kind of cloudy, as you can see. You probably can see. We've been cloudy, so it's been, it's been nice. It kind of gives me a chance to step back and think about what I want to do. But there it is. There's the yard. And I'm hoping it's going to be transformed into something full of flowers. I'm definitely keeping plants that we eat, growing plants. That's very important to me. All these big plants, purple tree collards, regular tree collards. Look at the lemon verbena. I mean, all those plants that we eat... I've turned into trees, and I think that's fantastic. Now, the geranium needs a good cleaning. Let me see if I can zoom in. See, that needs a good cleaning there because it's a lot of it's got, you know, dye back on it. So I want to get that off, but I think it's just gorgeous. Now, this I'm going to move. My plans are to clear this area up. I'm very much debating on taking out my moringa. It's so big and it's kind of in the way and I've got new ones growing that I'm going to debate whether we're going to take it out or if I'm just going to chop it back. And then I want to set up chairs here. This cage I plan on putting further down where I feed the birds. The cage is good because the small birds can go in and out, which is fantastic. Set this up much nicer and better. It literally was thrown out here just to see how it was going to work out. The door is open. This is just the dog crate. Now, you would think it looks terrible, but let me tell you something. No hawk can ever get a bird. So they can just hang out, and they do hang out in there. The doves hang out in there. The, uh, the towies, the white crowned sparrows, they all just hang out in there. And then all this, I can compost all that seed that they've eaten, and it catches it in the stand. But nothing can swoop because a hawk 
swoops when they're going to catch their prey. He can't swoop. He'll, he'll basically smash his head if he tries to swoop. So they can't get him. An open feeder they can, but not this. So this has worked out really good. But I want to get chairs in here. I definitely am going to keep the papayas. I mean, don't you think everybody should be growing how many papaya plants in a 18 gallon tote? Sure. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I think everybody should be growing 12 papayas in a tote. We actually made a hole on the bottom. I think the root is down here. We've shown it before. We made a hole so the root could, could go down into the soil. So though it looks like it's growing in a tote, it has long left the tote. And then I want to clear up a lot of these. The tomatoes, of course, I'm keeping. I'm, I'm not really getting rid of anything. I just want to make things off the ground so I don't have to bend down on the ground. I want to have things around it on the ground. I think that would be fabulous. But have more totes and it doesn't have to look like my rainbow garden. I actually got some dark paint that I can paint some chairs dark because when you have them dark, they kind of disappear. So when you paint them black or you paint them a dark brown, you won't really see them. See the rail that Gary painted that's green? See the difference between having a white one and then a nice dark green one? It kind of disappears in the garden. That's why I think some dark chairs here with some totes and then I can have things off the ground. It actually deters rodents as well. Rodents are not really crazy about going off the ground into something. That's not saying they won't do it, but it kind of deters them a little bit. So I'm going to change things up there. And let me step back over here. And I never did anything here. Here's Gary's room. I don't think he's, I think right now it's really abandoned, except for some trees that he's got to get out. But he hasn't done anything. He'll probably do more in the winter. And I'm going to get a lot more going because now I have a method how I grow seeds in tool. I'm growing everything. Right now I've got onions growing that I can plant at any time. I've got cabbage growing and planting out. Go watch the video. And the reason I like it is because there's no holes in any of my containers. So I can just set the container anywhere I want. And I'm telling you, it makes life easier. We'll talk about that another time. Anyways, this is, this is going to be gutted and recomposted back. This, I'm letting it do its thing because I want to get a lot of cuttings off of this. This is absolutely beautiful. I believe that's a Russian red, red kale. And see the curly kale? And it's just growing so good. So I finally got it growing side shoots. So I can take a bunch of side shoots off. And then I'll decide where I want to cut it. And I'll redo this and leave it. And then there's more growing down there. This is just mint. Never planted in that. And this is another moringa that just kind of sits there. Which I'm going to leave that. So that's basically it. But I think just this with flowers everywhere, all kinds of flowers, oh, I'm gonna be growing. Flowers with seeds, I'm gonna be growing. Flowers from cuttings, I'm gonna be doing a whole bunch. But like I said, right now I don't have to knock myself out because I am working on my deck and I've got all these ideas that are coming to me. I have to write them down because it comes so fast and then I go back going, what was I gonna do? And then I have to remember. So I'm actually doing little video clips even of me just saying, hey, this is what I've got to do. We're almost sick of papayas. Uh, we bring them in. You know what I bring them in for? To give to the dogs. We eat a little bit and we are tired of papayas. We had a lot of pomegranates and I left some and I think the ravens snatched some of them. I'm not happy because there was more here yesterday that are gone, but we did pick some. So I'm going to have to make sure I get my pomegranates off early. We had one, I was getting ready to get it, turned around, it was gone. I mean, totally gone. A rat normally drops it and eats it, but it was totally gone. So it probably was either a squirrel or the ravens who've been hanging around just taking all kinds of stuff. But the papayas are doing good. I think they're struggling a little bit, even though we're watering them, because we are in a severe drought. There's been just, what, a couple days of rain and that's it all all basically all year but all in all they're doing good this needs a little more water here and I never grew in these totes this year we'll see what we want to do next year and then that's basically it look at my cactus it's got a new baby cactus starting on the side a new leaf I should say and then I've got a rosemary back here that was something I I think I've told the story on that one I jumped out of the car and I grabbed it and there was no thorns no no you know 
not, no stickers on it. And I thought, oh, wow. And I brought it home and stuck it there and it grew. Then one day I saw another one. I grabbed it. Oh, I'm not grabbing cactus anymore. That one was loaded. But anyways, I brought that one home. So we've got the elephant food through here, rosemary. I know I've talked about the rosemary years ago. Four or five years ago? Let's say five years ago. I went to the 99 cent store and they had rosemary in these pots for a dollar and they had a few different plants in them. I don't remember what the other plants were, but I took them home and I just stuck them in the ground and there's three here. One, two, three, and they just grew into massive bushes. So that was really, really a fortunate thing to grow. And then my rainbow garden, which I haven't done anything with. The strawberries I want to redo, I want to give them more room. If I put strawberries back in there, there'll be just a few plants. It's too overpacked and you can see it's just too much. The potato mint is doing fantastic. There's two totes there and I can't wait to harvest. I'm going to harvest it as soon as it dies back, just like the ginger and turmeric, because then everything will go into the tubers, which are like potatoes, and you can eat those raw or you cook them up just like potatoes. I'll take you with me on that. I did have to cover it early on because a squirrel was coming and eating them. And as soon as I put the tool on there, he went away and I had no problems with the squirrel. So that's why I don't really reach in there to check on anything because as you can see, there's a red tote and a blue tote and they're both growing in there and I wanna see what's in there. Now the red one is the one I actually planted in. The blue one I was getting ready to plant in and it grew over <laughs> into the blue one. So I don't know what's in the blue one. But I'll take it down when they start to die back and then the little moringa in the center. But I'm so anxious to see how that's going because I found out that potato mint here in Southern California loves the hot, hot sun. Unbelievable, but that's what it loves. And I had it in an area, didn't do that well, brought it out here. And I thought, well, I'm just going to throw it out here and see what happens. And it loves the heat and it loves the sun. The sun sets there and it gets the hottest part of the sun you know, during the day, and it loves it. And all in all here, everything is the same. Haven't gotten to this wall yet, that's this spring, or maybe during the winter. That's a very special system. I know a few people have been waiting for it. I'll get that set up for the new, you know, new year, and then I'll get a chair there. That is exactly the way I want it. I just have to lock them like I did my pizza garden. But that's the way that's gonna be. And I figured I'll wait until the fig tree, still figs on top, loses its leaves and then trim the fig tree way down and then work on that. Everything here is doing good. You've seen this. This is just a little two system. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at that. I hope you can see that. Oh, they're very upset. You know what? I don't want to upset anything. Let's grab some leaves. So at least I didn't open it for nothing and just throw some leaves in there. It doesn't, it could be green leaves. It could be yellow leaves. This is, oops, this is like a worm farm I developed and I did not put the worms in there. They just came and they were tiny and they just lived there. They absolutely love it. I water the top, which is really bad soil. It's native soil, two onions in there. But underneath, I just keep throwing, you could put kitchen scraps in it. It's really tiny, but leaves from the garden. Oh, I've got one beet down there. Oh, look at that, one beet. Right there, I've got one beet. Oh, actually, there's two. And then I've got, uh, I think there's one more melon left. Oh, yes, I better get that off soon. One Korean melon that's back there. My pepinos. Now, the pepinos will stay here. As long as they can grow, they're going to stay there along with the pepper. This is the black cobra. Nothing's changing there. This is all broccoli and I've let it go wild. I know you're not supposed to, but I'm leaving it for the goldfinches and the birds to feed on. And then I'll cut it way down. If it makes a comeback, I'll leave the broccoli. There's one there, there's one there, there's another one in this tote, and there's one more behind me. You'll see it in a minute. Because the birds need food and with the drought and everything, I figured leave it, I don't need it. I've got plenty growing on my deck now. I've got plenty growing in my other garden. So we'll see what happens with that. This is the mustard, the purple mustard. Isn't that gorgeous? I just picked yesterday a whole bunch. I just grab them and pick them. Sometimes I think Gary comes and grabs the top of the leaf and eats it. You don't have to eat the whole leaf and just take off what you want. That has been really good. That's where the watermelon grew, but they're done. So that will either come out or reseed. And then that's another two system. If I lifted that, it's gonna to be too hard right now. The green bucket underneath will be full of worms like the other one. I'll show you another one I set up. 
Celery, celery is good, but keep in mind, it gets so big, it really takes over the whole tote. As far as nutrients, it will pull everything. There's a bucket back there in with the celery, a yellow bucket, and it's growing uh, garlic in there. And then this is the other broccoli I was telling you about. So this too, see the seed heads though it's developed? I could collect this if I want, or I can just leave it for the birds. They haven't started to hit this yet, but once they come in here, they'll peel this and they'll eat it. And then, oh look, I didn't see that. This is asparagus. It's the purple passion. It could be a hybrid, I don't know. It's from the seed. I grew some seeds, but this is gonna be flowers. See the little bowls? It's gonna have seeds on that, more seeds. I left that in there for fun because some people say you cannot grow asparagus in containers. So I wanna see what's gonna happen. I grew it on my deck and Gary took it and put all the baby asparagus plants into his garden somewhere, I don't know where. And I kept one, well I didn't keep it, it was there, I didn't know it was still there, so I planted it out here. I figured instead of giving it to him, I'll see what happens. 100 tomato plants in a tote, don't do it, it's a waste of time. And there is my red roselle, or roselle red. I don't think I can keep it alive because it really is an annual, and I think I'll just be collecting the seeds and bring it back. And maybe plant it up against the wall, it will look really pretty, and get other things in here. Let's walk over here. Um, let's see, where else should we go? We can do a quick walk. I'll start from down there, and I'll walk back so you can see it. So I'm starting from the holy part of my garden. Actually, it's a hole in the ground that Gary had to dig because a pipe broke, and we have no plants here to get any benefit from it. Well, that's not actually true because he's got a pipe that goes down there and waters all the trees down there, but still, you don't want a pipe leaking. So how's it going? It's going good. So I broke the plant when I tightened up the bolts, so I split the part here. So to make sure that it seals good, I put an extra clamp on it. Cool. All right, well, I'll let you get back to work. So we'll have water again. Water's off? Water's off right now. I have no water. I don't need water. I've noticed lately that I don't have to water more than once or twice a week, if that. It's been very damp. Okay, we're going to keep going, and I'll let you do your thing. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Nothing. That's what I'm saying. Everything is pretty much the same. The tomatoes are doing really good. I've got purple basil coming up in here. I think it was in here. I saw it somewhere. I've got regular basil there, and I have purple basil somewhere. Okay, it's not in this one. It must be another one. This is doing really well. I'm not sure yet what, let me back up this a little bit. I'm not sure what I'm going to put in here, but I have an idea. As soon as I know, you'll know too. This is just an eggplant. Didn't really do much. I got one eggplant off of it, but look at all the carrots coming up. I should move them. A lot of the carrots are old. I didn't pick them. Oh, there's the purple basil growing in a jar. We're going to talk about how we can grow plants when they're not supposed to grow. These we don't want. This is carrot wood. Those trees up there, they drop their seeds and they absolutely love the totes, the compost that you know, it's created our own soil, and they grow like mad, so I have to pull them out. But the carrots are doing good, onions. I think I'm going to actually pull that avocado tree out and put it in a pot. Why? Because it's so straight and cool that I may try to graft on it. It's a thought, but we'll see. Not sure yet what I'm gonna do here, because this is all for spring. I've got some orange mint growing there. I've got a tomato plant that came up in that bucket there. It's doing wonderful. Been picking tomatoes. I've got my compost tea here. Not sure if there's anything in there. Oh yeah, look how moldy it gets. Doesn't matter, they love it. And I've got my scooper there, so I can just scoop it out, either one, the one with the long handle that's orange, or regular scooper, and I've been watering my lettuce. Let me tell you something, we've had more lettuce than we could use, which has been fantastic. I keep pulling lettuce and it keeps growing. I covered it with tulle that kept any white fly or aphids or anything off of it. I think I had a grasshopper get on there one day when it was open and ate a bunch down, but once I covered it up, I didn't see the grasshopper. It was good again. That tulle has been magnificent. So I wanna get a ton of lettuce growing. Here's more lettuce, this is just seedlings. See what I did here? It's just a chair with one of these round containers. Put some sticks in here to hold the tool up. Nothing can get in there. 
and now I've got lettuce growing. Just a simple, quick thing I threw there, and I've got all that lettuce growing. Walking onions, because I didn't know where to put them, so I got walking onions. I got a pepper back here, just a pepper plant, and then the strawberries. I don't know if I have any strawberries on it. Don't know if I have any strawberries on there. I've got strawberries. Okay, I'll come back and get those. Then that's the tomato plant my daughter got in 2020, and it's still growing, the Goliath. So I'm going to trim that up and keep that going and thin out the sorrel, the green sorrel, because it's just too big. Probably break it apart and then have a smaller plant. That is the leeks that grew. The, they grew instead of a seed. They grew leeks on leeks. So you'll see I haven't really done anything. Let's oh, look at this. One of those purple beauty peppers plants there. I wasn't sure what that little pepper plant was that was growing. More sorrel. So I haven't done anything. More peppers down there. More peppers there. It needs really some more leaves and stuff in there and freshened up a little bit and they'll take off. Plus remember it's wrong season for peppers but they are growing. I'm picking peppers all the time. More of the Goliath tomatoes in there. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So all in all, I'm really, really happy with all this. So this is the Malabar spinach. And notice this is really yellow. I think it's too warm against the wall and it gets cold nights. Hasn't been as happy as the one in my garden. You saw how big and green that was, the leaves. But, you know, I mean, it's nice down there. But the thing is, it is cooling and they really like the hot weather Malabar spinach. More of the black cobra peppers. See the black cobra? Hey, little guy. They're, they start off green, then they go right away into black, but they're not ripe until red, but you can eat them at any stage. If you want to collect the seeds, either let them dry on the plant or collect them when they're really, really red and the seeds should be good. More peppers, they keep, you've seen this before, I had that big red one I picked off. Look at this, now there's three, one, two, and there's, a, there's three. Oh, cool. So I've got three peppers on that, been picking all the eggplant off the eggplant. That keeps getting attacked by some insects or birds. See how they've eaten the top of the leaves? That actually looks more like birds or, because of the way they've eaten it down. It's probably a combination of both. No big deal. I'm just leaving. Some of them you, you want to sacrifice some because this way they'll go to that and they'll think, well, that's safe to eat at. Maybe I shouldn't go down there where the tool is. So let them do their thing and keep some for nature and keep some for yourself. This, I, I'm just, I'm crazy about this. All right, so I thought squash season, I should say zucchini season was over. I thought cucumber season was over too. I guess not. There's an eggplant. We do have eggplant with flowers coming. See? There's an eggplant there and there's a flower there too. I picked a giant yellow zucchini. These are yellow zucchini. I picked a big one off of that yesterday for dinner. We've been eating it. It's big, really big. Kitty's been eating it. The dogs have been eating it. Look at this one. This is how big they get. You should pick them smaller, but I picked them when it was big. And they're so soft and wonderful. Look at the zucchini. That's got to come off. Then I've got a hybrid down here because I didn't plant the plants down there. I wasn't sure what I was going to plant there. And then my seeds from dinner, you know, my, my kitchen scraps started to grow. So that's a hybrid, which is fine. It's probably a Cocozelle zucchini cross. And then I've got more on the top. As we got into cooler weather, all this started to die back and I started to compost the leaves and all of a sudden it made a big comeback. They're just all starting to take off. Now I do have the compost tea and I didn't use that, you know, in the spring and even in the summer. I started it more in the fall, late summer into fall. And that might be making a difference because I can just grab that and drop it into the totes. That's one thing. The other thing is, this is a south facing wall, so it's been very warm. So it's holding the heat all day when the sun is on it. And it's keeping these plants warm. And the weather conditions, the microclimate just worked out perfect. And all of a sudden the squash is making a really, really big comeback. So I've decided I'm going to help it big time. Because one year I had zucchini growing all winter into January. By the time it was time to plant again, I was still growing zucchini on the old plants. So that's what I'm hoping for because these are nice established plants. So in here you can see, I'm hoping you can see that. Okay, there, this is not a bucket, but it's just a container. It's probably a kid's school container like you put your pencils and stuff in. I bought them at the thrift store a while back. They were like 
50 cents or a dollar a piece. Both of those containers have holes on the bottom. The blue one, the dark blue one, has got kitchen scraps, leaves from the garden. It's packed with all that. The top one is just soil. Doesn't matter, soil I picked up off the ground. And I threw some walking onions in there. I water that and everything goes into the bottom and it's gonna be just like the ice cream container you saw in the rainbow garden. It's a two system. Two system can be anything you wanna set up. It could be the buckets. You've seen my two system video. I'll put a link to that at least on the end so you could see that one. That has been fantastic. This was a two system. This is the one that grew the squash all winter, one of them, because it had a two system in there where the bucket was full of compost and then it was just going into the tote and it was constantly feeding the plant. Well, I'm going to pull out, I know you don't start screaming. I'm gonna pull out the papaya. I lifted this yesterday and I can see this is gonna, see, they're gonna come out. So I'm gonna pull them out and find a different place for them. Yeah, I'm gonna probably find a place for them. And then, oh, look at this, isn't that gorgeous? Then what I'm going to do is just load the Dickens out of that. Leaves and kitchen scraps, eggshells, whatever I've got in the kitchen. And you got stuff in the kitchen like sour cream that went bad or cottage cheese or yogurt. You dump that all in there. And then I'm going to cover the top and I'll water it and then just keep it covered right now because I don't have anything to put on top. There is a lid and I'm not sure. Oh, the lid is back there. Okay, the lid's got holes. And I'm going to do what I did last time and that will compost in there and it will feed that container and that's what's amazing you'll have a constant food source going to that plant this one right now i'm not going to do it because i've got potatoes growing in there which is almost doing the same thing because this bucket was loaded with you know leaves almost to the top and then a small amount of soil and the potatoes were put in there so as i'm watering the potatoes it's still breaking down and feeding that container so I want to do it to all of them. I don't know if I'll do it this year because they're just starting some of them there. Because I've been trying to refurbish some of this stuff, but I never really got to it. I wanted to. I have pulled some soil out when I needed it somewhere else in a container. But this has just been great. I can't believe the comeback this is doing. So I want to see how much squash I can get out of it. And this is really good. I don't just harvest. I could go harvest those squash right now. A lot of you are saying, hey, it's too big. You don't want to wait. You know, these are ready to go, ready to be picked. They are ready to be picked. That is absolutely true. But here's the problem. The moment I pick this zucchini, the very moment, that skin is going to harden up. Right now it's soft. I don't want to scratch it, but I, I can feel how soft it is, like a baby's bottom. No, really, it is soft. So when I bring it in, whether it's today, whether it's in four or five days from now, that skin's going to be soft and I can grate up the skin if I wanted to do something with it. You know, the whole plant, the whole fruit, I should say. But, you know, and use the whole thing without peeling it. If I bring it in and it sits on the counter for, let's say, four or five days, the skin will get, start to get hard. It's harder to peel, but you still can do it unless you wait a month. Then it gets really hard. But the point is, you may want, not want to eat it, so you may want to peel it. But while it's on the plant, as long as you don't let it get too, too big, and this is getting close, it, the skin will stay soft. This skin is still soft. I can feel it. It's soft. I peeled one yesterday because it was a little bit bigger than that one. And the skin was so soft to eat, I just threw it to the dogs and they ate it. They loved it. And then I thought, well, I'm, why am I peeling it? So that's why I don't harvest unless I need it. There's that old container I did one of my first compost in place videos in. Still going strong and I gotta figure out what to do with it. I didn't plant anything in it. They just came up. See, here's another squash plant coming up. You can see the eggshells and stuff. Cause I wasn't quite ready. Here, everything has kind of died back. I have the tomatillos, they're done. I've been picking them or finding them fallen. Aren't they gorgeous? And that's what happens. So I just pick them up and use them. I think right now I'll just sit it in here because I see a few more and I'll come back and get them. But I've got zucchini growing. Look at this. See, that's what I'm saying. They're making a comeback now. Isn't that cool? They're making a comeback now. And that's unbelievable. So anyways, that's what's going on here. And then I still have the tomatoes. I'll trim that back. They'll probably stay alive really good. Look how purple. I love the color of them. The coloring is amazing. I sure hope I'm not rubbing on my mic because I'm, I don't like wearing a mic and I'm trying this. I'm hoping it works out. All right, so 
here I have done nothing. Now here, I was amazed to grow cucumber this time of the year. It's been cool at night, and I see some of my other plants down there are starting to grow. So I'm gonna take that cucumber, I'm gonna make cucumber, a cu cucumber drink with that. Because I've only got the one, I could make a salad, but I'm gonna make a drink probably. And then I've got more of the squash. They're all making a comeback. Look at this. Now I am using compost tea. I've got one stationed down there, but I wanna, you know, get some more put around because the, if they're closer, you don't have to walk. That tomato plant got attacked by hornworms. I don't remember seeing a hornworm, but obviously he would come out when I wasn't here. He would eat and then probably hide back in the soil or something. I don't know, or maybe a bird got him. Here's more papayas, probably will lift that out. I don't want them, they came up in my compost. And then more squash. And then uh, this is just, again, garlic chives, tons of seeds. I've collected so much. They're gonna fall and grow somewhere later. That moringa didn't do that good, but remember there's no real soil here because of the footing for this big wall. It comes way out. Gary says it comes out about six feet. So there's only about uh, maybe a couple feet of soil and it's not really enough for a big tree. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that. The geranium I stuck there. And then of course, just stuff that I haven't done anything. There's no reason to do anything. And then tomatoes. Keep getting tomatoes here. This, I started throwing things in. Oh, we have a big spider. I haven't seen too many spiders. Look at that. Hmm, I'm not a spider fan, but I know we need them. I never set this up to grow in. I'll probably end up throwing a lot of this back in here as compost because I put it here and decided I was gonna put one more tote threw kitchen scraps in there and the squash plants grew. So we'll see what happens with that. But this, you know, of course this spring, I'll redo all this. Now last year, I didn't keep up with it. The squirrels got in here and they wreaked habit in here before I put tool up. So I lost a lot. Next year, if they start doing that, I'll just string a whole thing of tool here because that got rid of them right away. Nothing new there. So I'm not gonna really go over there. I wanna fix that up too. Once I get my bird garden going, I would like to make this beautiful because I have seen like a couple dozen doves come down into the bathtub. The birds come down to this constantly. And I think this morning I saw a coyote roaming through here, probably coming for water. Haven't set this up yet, but getting close, getting close, because right now I'm working in my bird garden. This is gonna be dotted with buckets. Gary was talking about painting the truck bed. I don't know if I'm gonna paint the truck bed or not, but I've got one squash plant that came up, probably from last year's plant. See the old squash back there? So yes, I've got a squash plant. We'll see if we get any squash. I can't see from here, but I do see an old dried up squash. So it probably finally did its thing, broke open and grew. And then the rest of this is just Swiss chard. And I wanna compost all this back in here. I'm gonna compost some of it into the truck bed and then load up the buckets and look, a tomato plant came up in there. I might leave the tomato plant. It found a home, it's happy, might be my best tomato plant. I haven't trimmed my apple trees yet. These are the ones that grew from seed. I do want to trim them. My sage is still growing and then we've made a big circle. Look at that, we did the whole yard. I can't believe how much I grew out of here and I've done nothing. I see that we must have a hornworm here too. See how the hornworm is eating all this? The plant is done. Tomatillos grow and then they're done. They don't really, there he is. <gasps> Gary said he looked and he couldn't find him. You know, I have to admit, as much as I can't stand them because of the damage they do, they are very, very interesting creatures. I'm gonna leave him right now because he's not really hurting much. The plant is pretty much done. I will say that when you get one in there or two in there and they just destroy the plant. When they disappear and make their cocoon to go turn into that big moth, the plant doesn't come back. As long as they haven't chewed it where there's nothing left, they do make a, a big comeback. So now I know he is here. The lettuce is doing really good. It self-seeded itself and I'm growing lettuce. The pepper plant is doing okay. A little yellow, but you know, it just needs some more food. Maybe I'll get some compost tea. I don't think there's anything in this one. Nope, it's empty. See, so yeah, I've got to set this up, make some compost tea. The tomatillos, this was the one that grew all last winter. Be interesting to see if it's going to stay alive this winter. I don't know. And then I've got some, let's see, there's insects on there. I just leave it for the birds. These are empty. 
me see if I can get you in there. See, there's nothing here. See how beautiful this leaf is? There's a little bit on the back side and there, but the wrens come in here, I have seen them. All the little birds come in here and they just feast away, so I'm leaving it for them. These will be all cut back. I know I've had hornworms on this too. I don't see them, but we now know that they are here. These are just lettuce that are going to seed, and I'm gonna collect the seed off of this because I really like my own lettuce that grows here. It grows like a weed, and that's what I want. Tons of walking onions. These were baby walking onions, and this is all celery that I really don't want. So sometimes I pull these out and put them in our eggs. It's coming because there was a big celery plant here that went to seed, and the seeds blew in there. I didn't put those in there. And again, this is just sow thistle that I leave for the birds. You know, you can eat this. People do eat this. This is very, very good. It's like a dandelion, same family. And then what else is here? Some lettuces down there. And then there's garlic chives and then the tomato plant. So that's it. Now you got to see my hornworm. Oy. <laughs> so I can't, oh, I told you I was gonna show you my setup. Let me go get my setup so you can see it. Hopefully I'll get a bunch of nectarines next year. And Gary, I haven't hiked down there, told me his bees that are way down there in the trees are doing just fine. And the pizza garden's doing really, really good. That's the one I'm gonna set up like that there, but it won't be a pizza garden, it'll just be different things. I've got basil growing, oregano, sage. This basil just took off, it's just a monster. I've got some tricolor sage down there. I don't know what else I've got in here. There's some purple basil. I saw down there, here's rosemary. Some cuttings growing, that's purple basil. And then of course, yes, there's a papaya way back there. If you can see it in there, yes, that's a papaya. I've got to get it out. And then peppers, uh, we just keep picking peppers. It's unbelievable. The peppers we get on this and the tomatoes have been just so fantastic. So I'm very, very pleased with this vertical garden. And this is a ver vertical garden. Growing all this stuff from my pizza, and it has worked out beautifully. And it's all interlocked. All right, let me go show you what I've been using on my setup. So I'm back in my bird garden. Oh, I love these flowers. I'm so excited for growing flowers from seeds and how gorgeous they are and how tall they are. All right, so you wanted to see, I do a lot of things, I'm gonna call it the poor man's way. It's always worked for me. You know, even my mom, when I was a little kid, she would make us Play-Doh. She, we couldn't afford, she didn't go buy Play-Doh for me. So she would take the flour and a little bit of salt and water and mix it up and make it all different colors. And I would have a whole table full of all these different colored clays to make out of flour. So I do a lot of stuff the poor man's way. So does Gary. So that's the way I've done my planners, but I've also done my stand. And I'll show you my stand. And then I'm gonna go in the house and give Kitty some broccoli. So you can see what I've done in Maybe I'll give you an idea, I don't know, or maybe you'll think, my goodness, she's crazy, isn't she? So let me show you what's going on, because this is actually funny. Okay, I am now behind the camera. So I have a handle on my iPhone, but how was I gonna walk around with just a handle? So I had this tripod, <laughs> I don't even remember how I put it together. Look at this. Yes, you're going, what is this? So I had some oil from the animals, some, some calcium powder, and this was a nice container. And I attached it to this old tripod we don't use. I think the shoe is missing on it. There's something with this and we couldn't use it. I think it doesn't have a shoe. So I, anyways, you know, the, the attachment that you attach the camera to. So I, I duct taped this. So this thing is duct taped here. And I took the container the calcium container and I duct taped it to this tripod so I can still look at this. I can move it. I can do anything I want with that thing. Look at that. Now, when I put in my camera, it was too big. So now I put in a paper towel roll and put duct tape. So this is stiff and now my camera handle has a big fat handle on it so I can drop it in. You can't see, but I can drop it in there and then I can adjust it any way I want and it still goes up if I want. So let's put it this way. It may look funky, but it works and I like it. Why do I have to go out and buy something that's gonna cost me hundreds of dollars that I don't use that often? Plus, I think this works better. It just sits in there and I can tip it down if I wanna tip it down. I could tip it up. 
I can extend the legs. I, I have one set that can go up one more time and I can put it any way I want. Let's just put it this way. Didn't cost me anything. This probably cost me from the thrift store. I used to go to the thrift stores and see these tripods for a, a few bucks because they were missing the mounting part for the camera. And I probably brought it home. It sat, nobody used it. So I decided I'm going to make it. And that's what I've used for different things. I've even put my GoPro. This is actually my GoPro handle that is on my camera and it works. And I just drop it in there. I hope you can picture that, but you could picture a stick going in here. Well, my GoPro handle, it just sits there. Perfect. And then, like I said, I can slightly adjust it any way I want. So that is how I'm getting you around my garden with that. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat with you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. The stuff I come up with is crazy. I brought you some pieces of broccoli. Oh boy, does she love her broccoli. I've got the big stem too, if you want. You want more? Kitty, did you need more? All right, I'll get you some more. There's the rest of it. Okay, off she goes.